Okay, upcoming IEP meeting, developmental disability or developmental delay, um, sorry, developmental delay, which is DD. Um, it is a category that you can, that exists under the law uh, with regards to qualification for an IEP. At the same time, there's an age cap on how long you can have that developmental um, delay uh, category. And, you know, it, it, there are some differences per the state, but it's typically uh, nine years old is when that cutoff is. So uh, when, you, when you reach that cutoff, and the entire point is, is that developmental delay sort of covers a whole broad spectrum of, of areas. And I think the idea behind why they cap it at nine and, and don't continue it is that at that point, at age nine, if there's still developmental delays, then one of the other categories, specific learning disability, speech language impairment, uh, their health impairment, autism, um, intellectual disability, those kind of things would be overarching to encompass whatever remaining developmental delay uh, happens to exist, okay? So in your particular situation, so much of the delays uh, with regards to high functioning autism uh, is in the area of managing social emotional behavior, um, sensory deficits and executive functioning, things of that nature. It is not uncommon for us to see um, high functioning autistics be disqualified for an IEP during this time period only to have them requalify later when those areas of executive function deficits that you mentioned uh, really rear their ugly head um, if the school system and the parents aren't paying attention early on in a developmental period um, simply because of the natural evolution of, of the school curriculum, okay? Because um, ex some of those executive function areas along with the, the natural language deficits uh, in receptive and expressive communication. And even though your child may be communicating just fine ac according to everybody around him, uh, he may not with regards to the um, sensitivity on certain language assessments and, and assessments on pragmatics, which pragmatics is social communication. So some of those things there could be deficits and it, it, it may not be a deficit that meets any kind of discrepancy to qualify for a language disability, but it would be sufficient to need the school to be aware of it, you to be aware of it, so that you can design services uh, that would be crossing over to impact things like comprehension, reading comprehension, um, uh, phonemic awareness, those kind of things on the reading side and also the math side. So there's a correlation between all of those things uh, that you need to be aware of and that typically is where we see kids requalify after they've been dropped is when that transition occurs and it's usually around third grade uh, and if you see your child starting to struggle um, from that learning to read to reading to learn transition then that's where you, that's where you need to look. You need to start peeling back that onion. And what you're going to end up finding out is that um, many of the deficits that your child is, has as a high functioning autistic is going to mirror almost and and look like dyslexia uh, uh, in a lot of ways. And uh, you know, so that would be where I would you know pay attention on the academic front and I know you didn't ask that question you asked the social emotional but the social emotional is the easy one all right that could be feasibly managed under a good 504 but at the same time the school system especially if you manage your child's uh, social emotional issues or behaviors with with uh, uh, medication then at that point your child may not qualify because at that point uh, the school is making a determination away from developmental disability or de developmental delay into some of these other categories. And some of these other categories, you can only qualify under them uh, if very arbitrary rating scales filled out by, you know, the teachers that know your child or by you are what the qualifying piece is, you know. 
And so if, if, if they use uh, behavior or adaptive behavior rating scales, which most states do to determine whether your child would qualify under, let's say, other health impairment, then at that point, there, not, there must be some, you know, um, elevated uh, areas with regards to that social, emotional, uh, and behavior development. And if sometimes when a parent is medicating a child, you know, which is a parent's prerogative, then at that point what it does is it ends up masking the real issues. Now, technically, the law states that you can't do that. You know, you got to consider the child in their natural state. But if the, if the school personnel working with your child have never seen your child in their natural state, which is not medicated, then you cannot fault them for filling out the very arbitrary um, uh, rating scales based upon... Uh, human memory which is not perfect you know i mean i'm 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 an attorney i'm telling you that they're just it's not reliable you know what's reliable is is the data taken day to day on a child because that's an mental impression written down on the day that it occurred i'm not having to sit there and and, and reach back into somebody's memory six months to sit there and, and go huh did i ever see them do that you know, because that's a, what a lot of those rating skills are, is having the teacher go, hmm, did I ever see him do that? And then, it, you know, usually four categories of, you know, somewhat, always, never, seldom, you know, and you're going, how do you answer that? You know, and, and then at the same time, then you're dealing with humans that have their own understanding and their own perception with regards to social emotional development. I have a case right now to where, you know, I have a teacher, and I think that I'm not, I'm not saying she's a bad teacher, but she just absolutely refuses to acknowledge this kid's maladaptive behavior, and it's impeding his ability to get a behavior plan because she is is looking at his hitting, biting, throwing stuff as developmentally appropriate for a four-year-old. All right, and I'm not saying in some areas I I would disagree. I mean, some areas in some in some ways I would agree with her, but at the same time. That's what I'm saying. We have human beings filling out these arbitrary rating scales, which happens to be the entry gate into having your child qualify under some of these other categories, in, in, in including autism. So that's what you would be looking at. And so that might end up bringing you to the 504. And if it's the 504, then I'm not saying that they can't uh, help your child in these areas. But the only problem is, is if your problem, if your child has deficits, real deficits in social emotional development and behavior then that requires specialized instruction and specialized instruction is reserved for um, special education it's not reserved for 504 Re 504 is for accommodations um, and yes technically they could put a behavior plan in there but this is my thing why are we accommodating behavior we should be trying to reduce the behavior by skill acquisition and how do you do skill acquisition if a child has a disability? Well, you do it through specialized instruction, individualizing the child's instruction. That's special education. So it is It is absolutely, I mean, it's circular reasoning. It does, some of the stuff doesn't make any sense. And yes, it's very easy to disqualify a child that is being managed with medication or uh, that is high functioning to the point where you're relying upon arbitrary rating scales filled out by humans. That, that aren't perceiving um, the behavior from your child in the same way. And it's very, very difficult to take a case like that to due process because at that point you're asking a judge to, you know, basically call these people liars uh, in order to get your child uh, qualified. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of nooks and crannies that we've had to walk families through to um, get them requalified. That's why I threw in the academic piece uh, that that I can't see if he has executive functioning um, uh, issues. They may not pop up this school year, but they they could pop up in future school years. And I would look at language, um, the areas of language, including social communication, which is pragmatics, and have that tested. And then I would also look and peel back that onion on on the. Um, on the reading comprehension side, on the processing speed side, uh, because that's typically where we would see uh, issues. And when you start seeing issues and on those all academic fronts, then you start seeing an escalation in the behavior and the social emotional anxiety and shutdowns and things of that nature. 
So I know you had your meeting a few weeks ago, and I do apologize, you know, that I just got to this. But uh, you know, let me know how it uh, how it went. Um, and I'm, I mean, a positive is that he's made a lot of progress, and you want to keep on that trajectory. And and so don't be afraid of the safety net of a 504 uh, as you're sort of retooling and replotting uh, your your plan forward on you know if he needs to be reconsidered for an IEP. And I, that's that's just if 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 he didn't qualify, okay?